Hey everyone, Simon here from Top Tennis Training and welcome to video 2 from our Volley Blueprint course. In this video, we're going to break down the foundations of becoming a solid net player. Someone who finishes off points at the net on a consistent basis and whose opponents fear them coming into the net. Now in video 1, we talked about the importance of getting to the net whenever you can to finish off points and apply pressure to your opponents, both in singles and in doubles. We also spoke about why it's so important to use the correct grip when you're at the net and how the wrong grip will cost you many points against stronger opponents. If you haven't watched video number one, pause this video here and go and check it out right now. After we released video one, we had quite a few comments online from people who were not convinced that they could actually win points at the net on a consistent basis. Some of the comments were, no one comes to the net anymore, and Technology makes it impossible to attack the net like in past generations. So I found a few clips from this year's French Open. Now clay is the hardest surface to attack the net on, but you'll see Federer, Djokovic and even Nadal finishing off points at a net. Now I'm not saying that you should rush the net after every serve or run in blindly all the time. Of course you need to pick the right shots to come in on and calculate when is the best time to sneak in, as we see the pros doing here but it's about having that mindset that will allow you to finish the point at the net. If you're looking for those chance balls, you'll find them. If you're happy to sit back and grind all day, then you won't be actively looking for those chances. That's the major difference here, the mindset. Here is Grigor Dimitrov attacking the net against Stan Wawrinka and having some great success in doing so. Now Dimitrov lost this match, but he played some incredible points when he did get in. And here is Roger Federer serving and volleying on the clay. And this is his third round opponent, Kasper Ruud, one of the young guns, sneaking in and winning the point. So players are looking to finish points at the net. This is happening against the best counter punchers in the world. Now in this next point, we'll see Nadal have a chance ball, stay back, and he loses the point. So this shot right here, he could have come in on that, but he chooses to stay back. He grinds it out, and his opponent hits the winner. Now on this next point, Nadal has the chance. He sneaks in and he hits the volley winner. So now that we know the importance of getting into the net, let's discuss the first step to becoming a solid net player. Foundation. This means you're ready positioned when you get into the net. Now that you have the correct grip, you're on your way, but you still need a solid foundation that will allow us to move off into any direction and also at high speeds. Remember, when you attack the net, you have half the time that you normally have when you're on the baseline. So your split step at the net will be slightly different to when you are standing on the baseline. I teach three different types of split steps to my students. The first one is when they're deep behind the baseline. Murray uses this style of split step very often. It's higher than normal, and it's almost like you're using the ground as a springboard. I call this one the explosive split step. The second is when you're inside the baseline, normally in an aggressive position. Because you're looking to take the ball on, you don't want to be jumping too high, otherwise you'll be late on the ball. But also the distance that you have to cover is reduced when you step inside the court. I call this one the split squat, as it tends to be lower and resembles a slight squat in the legs. And the third one is the one that we will use at the net. This tends to be lower and wider than the other two. We use this at the net because we have less time, so we don't want to use a high split step, otherwise we'll be late. But we also want to have our center of gravity lower, so that changing direction becomes much easier. At the net, our main concern is getting passed on either side, or being lobbed. So we need a ready position that will give us the best possible chance to cover all three of those shots. This wider and lower stance gives us that. Now why exactly do we use a split step in tennis in the first place. It's very simple. Tennis is a multi-directional sport, meaning that we have to move in any direction. On any given shot, we might have to move forward, backwards, to either our right or left sides, and anything and everything between all of those. Unlike a 100 meter sprint, for example, where the athlete knows they only have to run forwards, so they set up with their body weight leaning that way, we have to have our body completely balanced in our ready position, so that we can move in any direction needed. The split step allows us to be in that balanced position where we can move off into any direction 
but it also allows us to use explosive energy from our leg muscles to push off into the direction of the shot. It acts as a launch pad to the ball. So the first two steps in becoming a better net player is to use the correct grip when at the net and to use a wide athletic stance in our ready position and the split step. Now there was a bit of confusion over the stats from the first video, so let's clear it up before we go any further. In 2017 and 2018, over 5,000 matches were analysed. These matches were at ATP, WTA, college and advanced USTA adult level. The data showed that the average match winner won around 55% of total points in the match, which means that on average the winner still lost around 45% of total points in the match that they ended up winning. Now where it gets very interesting is that 85% of points are over in 8 shots or less, 4 shots per player. In those 85% of points, if the player stays on the baseline, they'd win on average 46% of the points, 9% under the 55% average needed to win most matches at these levels. Whereas if they attack the net during those 8 shots, it could be a serve volley, it could be a chip and charge of a shorter return, maybe attacking a mid-court ball, they ended up winning on average 66% of those points, 11% over the 55% needed to win. Remember the lowest level in the study were the advanced adult players. The standard of play at these levels is extremely high and most players will have very good passing shots. So if attacking the net works against this level of opponent, then how about the lower levels? Picture your average club player being able to confidently finish off points at a net. Imagine how effortlessly they could defeat most of the players in their club and even their area. Video number 3 will be released in the next few days, so look out for that lesson. You definitely don't want to miss it. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you've enjoyed it and learned something new. If you have liked the video, please click the like button and also subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, please make sure you turn on the notification bell to get our latest videos as soon as we release them. Signing off, Simon from TTT, all the best guys and see you soon.